right, I really should be inside processing more vegetables, but I'm also hit with the realization that if I don't hurry up and get something in this garden now, I'm not gonna have anything from seed. So in order to have my seeds able to be put in the ground, I gotta remove the old plants. But just before I did, I checked on those mushrooms from yesterday and yeah, I was able to pick quite a few and there's quite a few more pinning. So the ones on the left are from right here in the yard. I actually have that fireplace cover protecting one of the bigger clumps so that the ducks won't step on it before I can harvest it. The ones on the right are from back behind the she shed and they're growing in a little bit more shade. So I guess maybe that's the reason for the color difference. Maybe the tree's canopy is protecting them from water, but that purple color on the left is so pretty and pronounced here in the main yard. All right, so I got sidetracked from the main mission here of getting in this garden and getting her done. I hate pulling out plants that I know could potentially still produce, but I also know that if I want my fall and winter stuff to continue to produce they have to be strong enough by the time we get frost so I have to plant them now so that they are big enough size that when we get frost they survive it and continue growing through the winter this is the hardest part Ugh. well besides the fact that my velcros got left out in the rain is cutting my tomato plants. Oh, <laughs> oh, so hard. This is a good a day as any to start the rebuilding of life. The roads that lay open are many when the old one's gone under the knife. And I can I'm just gonna leave this here for the ducks to pick clean. They're gonna love any of those cherry tomatoes that are left on the vine. And then I can pull the cages loose from the stems. You can see this one was already completely dead. So it shouldn't be too hard to get the main stem out. You just have to cut a few of the side stems off. But now this bed is almost ready for planting. So I'm gonna leave the peppers because they're still producing and they're not taking up a whole lot of space. I'm gonna pull these weeds and just maybe top dress with some more compost. I bent over and pulled like, what, three weeds out and I hear somebody approaching. It doesn't take them long to find out that there's yummies about. Got the weeds pulled. And I'm seeing little tomato sprouts coming up from the fallen fruit. That's what happens when you have tomatoes falling in your bed. And now it's starting to rain. Gosh, I didn't even get one bed done. Another reason why I love Florida weave is I literally can come in here and just cut through each of the strings. And voila, I'm done. I just yank everything out. All right, I kept working through that drizzle, but I had to keep my phone in my pocket, not film. So I got these beds pulled. Feeling pretty good about that. I turned around and I was like, oh my gosh, I have not spent any time out here in the garden in the last couple of weeks. And my snake, Gore Bean, has literally left the bed, guys. <laughs> I haven't been retraining its little runners like I normally do <laughs> they're all the way on the ground they were all up on here and there is 
wing bean everywhere. I have actually not had a chance to try these yet. Every time I've harvested, it's been like two wing beans and then I set them on the counter and I think, oh, I'll get to it eventually. And then they end up shriveling up and going in the pig bucket. So I actually haven't tried them yet. But got a snake gourd growing on my bird. The, the snake gourd is growing on my bird netting. Crazy, right? You can see that the ducks were able to reach one and eat the end of it. So there's some more snake gourd growing in here. The wing bean is just hiding, I guess. Because I didn't think I had that many. And that's one of the things I will say about this. Just as growing a vegetable opinion, it took too long to produce. And it's not really producing enough for a harvest. So, not sure if I will grow them again unless I fall in love with them. There's more up here, though. So, maybe I need to... Maybe I need to g give them a chance and taste them. There's a snake gourd bean in there that got away from me that's super fat. So, I'll have to harvest that. Another one growing on the fence. And they're growing down the fence. Pulling the fence down, mind you. So, that's not good. But I've got one big lemon squash I'm letting go for seed. And then so many babies putting on that I don't think I'm going to pull these. I'm tempted to because I could use this space for so many other things. But I just hate to take a producer, a plant that's putting out so many blooms and fruit and take it out of the garden. You know, it's like in its prime. Well, I didn't think I was going to take out my cucumber because it was doing so good. But then overnight... It wasn't. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out. And uh, I'm going to plant some new seed. And I know that might seem crazy this time of year to be planting cucumber. But in Georgia, we often get a nice long fall growing season. So I feel like we should have time. And if we don't, then we don't. But if I don't try, then I won't have it, right? So these younger planted tomato plants aren't doing so great. The blight has really moved into our area in Georgia and they are just not doing great. Yay, I got my helper. Where? Oh, you're talking about me. <laughs> so Ryan's going to pull all the plants out of their cages and organize the cages by size and style. And uh, we will dispose of these tomato plants not in our compost because we don't want to carry that blight over from year to year in our compost so they'll go in a garbage disposal heap which is plant related but it's not so it'll compost back into the ground but it won't be going back into our garden it's not a compost pile that we use it's for compost it's just a compost pile that we use for stuff that we don't want to bring back into our garden make sense a little bit. Do I make any sense? Yeah. I do? Yeah. What did I just say? We're gonna put these in a separate pile to compost into their own separate pile and we're not gonna use it in our garden. It's just gonna go back to the earth somewhere else. Okay. Good deal. Glad, glad I was understood a little bit, at least by you. I feel like I'm not making any sense right now. <sighs> this is the moment I have been waiting for. This totally, totally makes my day. Y'all, look. It's perfect. It's a perfect bean. I've waited all year for this. Mmm, so good. Right out of the garden. My favorite. Mm. Okay. I need to pick some beans, finally. So I've been trying to harvest the vining okra from Miss Elsie when they're a bit smaller, but they tend to grow really big, really fast. And I had some really big ones that I harvested last. And I tell you what, I peeled them, skinned them all with a potato peeler and chopped them up and sauteed them. And it was just like eating a, like a zucchini or a summer squash. I really enjoyed them. I don't mind them getting bigger 
In fact, I kind of think that they might be a great summer squash substitute for people who have a hard time growing summer squash because it reminded me of the same flavor tones and they grow from this size to huge very quickly. So you could get a lot harvested from just one vine. This is just three vines and I have, it's out of control. I have so many. Now, if you harvest them at this size, you don't need to peel. You can just eat the skin and all. They're nice and tender and they do kind of have an okra-like resemblance. So while some people do call this plant a loofah, it is not the same loofah that you grow when you're trying to grow the sponge. While it might have a sponge-like consistency if I let it continue and go to seed, it's not the ideal for growing sponge. There's two different species of the loofah gourd. One is more prone for growing a nice round sponge and it's called smooth okra as a common name. And the other is this one which is used more for food and it is called uh, angled gourd or angled loofah or Chinese okra or climbing okra or vining okra. So common names can be deceiving. This is related to loofah, but it isn't the one that you would traditionally grow for the loofah sponge if you were growing for the sponge. But even the loofah sponge gourd is edible when it's young. So it is something to keep in mind. Hello, pretty butterfly. You appear to have some damage to your wing. I'm sorry. There's a pretty little red spotted purple. It's probably at the end of its lifespan when it has that much damage to its wing. It usually means that they've spent a good amount of time on this earth mating, laying eggs, and for the future generations. These sweet potatoes just won't stop. I've been cutting off the longer pieces on the edge. I was going to have it for dinner the other night, but then we didn't end up having it for dinner because the sweet potato greens are edible. Um, but the chickens absolutely love them. So it's something that's good to grow if you need to grow some extra greens for your animals. These are great. And the root is also able to be eaten by the animals too. So it's a win-win. And as you can see, I haven't really done much and it's taken over. Are you getting beans? I'm getting beans. <laughs> I'm so excited. I was afraid you weren't going to want to pick any beans after picking two and a half buckets with me the other day at the farm. They're delicious. Yeah, they are. And we finally got them to grow here without the ducks messing it up or nature. Because our first round of beans that we planted, it was just the hot and dry conditions that just killed them. Now that we've got some cooler moist weather it is really making these grow perfectly i just got to keep the ducks away from them it's almost like they know i'm talking about them they came looking hi girls well hopefully mostly girls the mama is the white one her head is more red because she's an adult the other ones are just starting to grow in some of the red coloration that muscovies are famous for and they are just cleaning up over here where Ryan cleaned up the tomatoes. So I bet they're finding little cherry tomatoes around. You like that? There you go. There you go. Do you like that? You're a pretty girl fiddler. Oh, the wind is blowing you. Here, let me block you with my body. Here. Your feet are tasting the fruit. So you know it's there, but your proboscis is going in front of you where the fruit isn't. There. There you go. Now your proboscis is right on the fruit. Oh, that calmed you down. Look at you, getting a good drink. 
we used to feed the butterflies at the butterfly center different types of rotting fruit on plates so they could get their liquids and sugars from it. So magical. I'm gonna put the pair down and pick some bears, okay? I know the wind's blowing you, isn't it? Here, let me put the pair down. Come down with it. There you go. All the way down. Nope. Over here. <laughs> here, I'll bring it to you. Oh, the wind's blowing you backwards, baby. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna put it down right here. Maybe you'll find it. Oh, you just wanna come back to me, huh? We stopped right in the middle of getting our garden ready for the fall planting because we realized that we hadn't picked these pears yet and if we don't, the deer are going to get them all. We did it. We got some. What did we get? We got a whole. Oh, 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 stop. A whole Babies. Five, whole five gallon bucket. Whole five gallon bucket and babies. Go fritillary caterpillars. That's the ca that's the caterpillar of the butterfly that was just hovering around me. That is so sweet. Well, would you just look at those dark clouds headed our way? You can see the rain coming out of them. That is why I haven't been able to get too much done out here. But little by little, I will try to come out here and get more done. At least got the tomatoes pulled today. And got some stuff that I harvested. This is not something I harvested today. This has just been sitting out here. I need to harvest the seeds from it and plant them. But got some more eggplant, more peppers, jalapenos, snake gourd, wing bean, and sweet potato vine and squash. So, wow got an entire five gallon bucket of pears. We do have ones that are nibbled on by whatever has nibbled on them, but I can cut around that. And then, you know, the bigger pears that aren't nibbled on, they even have some damage that you can see. So when I cut open, I'm probably going to have some spots that I have to remove, but a good amount of usable pears still. So I should get some pear preserves put up this week. I'll start with the damaged ones, getting them cut up, and then work my way through the bucket. Can't forget the green beans and ground cherries. Those will just be eaten fresh, probably. My ducks are cooler than yours are. I love that Muscovy will perch up in a tree. They're so funny, up inside. Are you using that stool to get up there? The big old walnut tree.